Okay, Facebook and Instagram, I am here. And I am so, so sorry that our scheduled live event last week did not happen. I mean, what in the world? Talk about panic. Did you panic? Oh, of course, Lisa, you panicked. I panicked. I panicked. I'm panicking now because I'm not on your Instagram live. I was in La La Land or something. And yeah, mine paused too. I don't understand that. Anyway, well, Facebook, I'm glad you guys are on. I'm not sure what's happening. Instagram paused on me. So if Nikki, Navid, are you out there? Because we have no idea what to do. So Text everyone, me. cheers. Oh, cheers. There it, there it goes. Cheers, everyone. Salute. Salute. Lisa was panicking for good reason last week. I We had a technical difficulties. I don't know what happened on my end. And... Um, but here we are today. We yes, here we are today. And you know, the thing is, I have learned a lot from COVID. I mean, we just got to ride with it. We just got to ride with what life yeah. happens. And COVID has thrown all of us in a tizzy, in my opinion. It, it has totally freaked us out. And then to on top of everything else that's going on, I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. I, I, it's just really thrown off all of our schedules and, um, and and it's kind of segue into what we're talking about today. What's the new norm? I mean, it's, it's crazy. Well, I think all of us have a new norm because some of us, especially a lot of the essential workers, I mean, my heart goes out to them, big, huge things. You know, they still have jobs, but they're in a high risk job now more so than ever. Yes. And, and, that's got to be hard. And then some of us don't, you know, we're, we're, we're dependent on the stimulus package and an unemployment and all the states are different. We know what we're going through in our state. Right, right. And everyone is facing their new normal and it's very similar, but it's very different from each other. Very different, very different. I mean, like yes. you and I, I, I know we did a post, you know, because we finally got together, you, Lisa and I. No, you Deb. Lisa and I, you, you Deb and, Deb. I. and look at my hair. I should have combed my hair. Oh my! You know gosh. what? You say that every time. Your hair is beautiful. You just had it done by Trent. Everybody that's out there that I know, but I should have brushed it. It looks nice. Well, the other it's thing silly. is too is um, I just got done filming. So let's go back to the post. Oh well, yeah. it's part of filming because yeah. you guys so graciously film with me. But before you guys could do that. You had to get a test done and yes, we had to we make sure yes. because I've got a crew, I've got us, make sure you guys were, you know, tested uh, negative. Thankfully yep. you were. Thankfully. Yes. Thankfully. I've and had no so, time, so, you know, I think we just got to chill and take a breather that hopefully the majority of the people are doing the right thing when mm -hmm. it comes to wearing a mask. Uh, doing physical distancing, and when you are socializing, are you still doing those physical physical distance and wearing the mask and all this other stuff? Because I'm pretty much quarantined in my house. I mean, the only yeah. place I go to is the grocery store. Me too. And again, Me too. We're six feet apart. We're wearing a mask. Yeah. And, and death for the most part. So I think people had to chill, at least on the one stream of comments, that uh, we are wearing masks. We are doing our due diligence Agents. and um, we're following the procedures, the guidelines. That yeah. Are yeah. We're, we're, so. yeah. We're following the guidelines, what has been stated by our state or the federal right. government and the federal doctors. So of course we were yeah. able to get together. We didn't have to yes. wear the mask and we were eating and we had just got done filming. So anyway. Yeah. And that I was regarding your post that you did, I think it was Wednesday. Did we film Wednesday or yesterday? It might, I think yesterday I did it. Yeah. yeah. So for those that don't know what we're talking about. Oh yeah, that's right. I did a post and Lisa, Deb and I got together at my house cause we were filming at our house. I appreciate everyone's concern, but I, I think the main point to me mentioning, cause otherwise I wouldn't even mention it. Cause yeah. you know, for every <laughs> thousands of positive, you know, there's also those that, you know, may not seem positive, but I totally get it from yeah. a lot of perspective, from their perspective. But let's not jump on the bandwagon and make assumptions about other people and what they're doing and 
deciding right. what they're thinking and what they're right. concerned about because you know, I got a dad that's 91. I'm going to do my due diligence. I know my sister in Michigan is doing their due diligence. I got grandbabies. You know, you got your kids and your family. Yeah. So it's like, let's not jump on the bandwagon. And assume that and we're assume not being careful. Or that we're just being nilly willy. Because yeah. that's not true. Look at this. We're doing this through screen share. Usually we get together at your house. So we've been doing it this way from the beginning. So it's like, welcome to your kitchen. Welcome to my bonus room. This is a part of us that we're sharing with you guys. And uh, we love it. We love hearing the comments. And so we're today we're what? Thank you guys all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, we continue to be excited for Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. Right, Lisa? We do. We do. You know, with uh, with an online business and starting one up and a lot of small businesses going under and stuff, we're really trying to work through the whole shipping and COVID and how that's impacted, you know, some of our business and stuff. So we really appreciate everyone being patient when you yeah. have made an order. It may not come as quickly as you might have expected, uh, but there's no delay on our part. So we're really no. trying to stay in communication with uh, the items that we have um you know, in the shop to yeah. really help you guys let you know uh, when you're going to get your item. Follow the tracking number, right? Yes, that's right. And we're really excited because we are inviting artisans to come in and yes. apply and we are going to feature them every quarter. We'll have a few and they can sell their products on Amy Roth's Little Kitchen. So stay tuned for that because we've got some quality uh, businesses out there that we're considering right now. And if you want to apply, go to amyroloffslittlekitchen.com. Well, let's put a disclaimer on that because it's U.S. items only. Yeah. Right? Think, well, we're looking at, we're exploring. Some artisans might be able to ship international. So that's really? kind of exciting. Yeah. So we're okay, going to Well, we're going to make sure that that can happen because I know so much. Um, I feel bad for international, you know, in this whole online thing. But because we're such a small you know, company and so many other small shops, uh, yeah. the expense of doing international is, is great. Especially and, with food items because yeah. they, they can perish. So that's well, why even the other food. items too, that we have like the tote bag, the coffee mug, some of the t-shirts mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even my book. Yeah. Mm. I'd so. have a little sip. Oh yeah. Me too. <laughs> so anyway, well, all right. For Let's Lisa and to... I, we generally work out of the home. So we're definitely impacted by COVID, but not so much as everyone else. And as we come towards the end of summer, can you even believe we're in August? Oh, where did it weather, go? The weather changed today and we have rain. We've had yeah. beautiful sunshine for 10 days, whatever. And now it just feels like the weather's changing and it's fall. I can totally feel the well, it. we need rain. We do. We do. So, okay. Let's do some Don't shout tell out. Me Facebook. Oh, I see it yeah. moving now. Okay. Oh my gosh. Let's do some shout outs. I know people want to be involved and so let's No, say hi. I, I agree because I still have not been able to get a handle on why the the comments from everyone goes by so fast. Well, oh, someone said there's a delay when you talk. Hmm. It may be your internet connection, but we'll just keep moving forward. I this don't is being understand video. that. This is being recorded, so we'll post it again later so people won't see it delayed. Well, you know what's so frustrating about if, if it is delayed or the talking? I paid extra money to get better internet. I mean, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like the oh show must go on, right? We just have yeah, to Yeah, I guess don't so. Point out the pause. Let's just move forward. <laughs> Well, someone asked, is Lisa working for Amy? And I'd have to say, no, we're both working together because Lisa has a stake in Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen as well as me. So we're kind of, we're definitely partners. Yeah. So we're working for each other, really. 50-50 partners. Yeah. And so <laughs> I we mentioned it before. It's, um, we really checked in, you know, to the friendship part of it because business yeah. does change things. Right, right. And we just really wanted to make sure that that wouldn't be impacted. 
And so, um, but yeah, we work for each other. Mm -hmm. So we keep hoping and pushing for ARLK because it's fun. I think it's uh, getting people excited. Mm -hmm. What do you know? Mm -hmm. COVID shows up, but you know, gathering around at least those people in your household or your family that's been, you know, quarantined and you know where they've been. Um, because I think we need to make the best effort to do what we need to do, what your state requires and everything like that. Because um, um, I, I'm a big fan of trying to get people back to work as best we can. We know right. it's not going to happen like it used to, but I'm like, people wear a mask. When you need to wear a mask, you wear it, period. End of story. If you are around people, you wear a mask. You keep yeah. the physical distancing. Whether you're around people or not, anytime you need to be washing your hands, you should be washing your hands. Don't forget <laughs> about that part. You know, yeah. really, seriously. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah. Well, I don't I know. I just, I'm a big fan. Yeah. People just do it. Yeah, well, and I think what's happened too is it's really exploded on your end as far as cooking videos and people wanting to see different um, things that you do and how you make certain recipes. And I, I think that's really filled in. I think people will agree with me that um, they are loving watching you cook in the kitchen. It's, it's a different dynamic from you uh just on the farm and doing these things so to dive into the kitchen part and all the cooking um we've had a great success with um uh with youtube posting videos and we're also working on a cookbook right now so um that will be fun to to send out an electronic cookbook and maybe we'll publish it maybe not but uh i think people are are enjoying you're cooking. Well, that's what we're trying. That's what I'm trying to do. And, and kind of just keep myself active, enjoying a passion of mine and sharing it with other people. Uh, Cause there's so many people that are cooking because of COVID. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Anne Marie just said that, or yeah. Anne Marie said that she made your peach pie and it was delicious. Oh really? Okay. I yes. am so glad. Yes. I am so glad. And you know what, if you wanted to add a little, um, a little more oomph to it. Give a little splash of bourbon or something. So you make bourbon peach pie. Oh, Ooh, I think that'd be good. When are you going to make that? I'll come over for that. Well, I did a cobbler uh, like a year or two ago. I made bourbon peach cobbler. I'll, I'll have to mm. show that recipe too. That sounds great. Um, that sounds but great. But I will tell you guys, like I mentioned before, it is just me pretty much because of COVID doing the videos, getting the things set up. And, you know, I, I, I still am plagued by how much do you want to see? Do you really want to see me cutting up all this stuff, prepping for it? I just, that just seems There's a lot of work. It just seems a little boring. And then I, I, with the mixer noise going on, I don't know. I think people love to see that because it's real. You're, yeah. you're in your kitchen, just living your life. You're not, staging anything or you know saying certain things oh, and, see, see you look know. at the background i'm definitely in my kitchen here yeah oh, hey i want to say hi to deb she's watching hey deb. oh yeah deb she's at work right now and yeah. again she's telling us stories about all the measures that they need to take in order to stay safe at work because mm -hmm. you know deb has a different job than lisa and i and she needs to go to work she needs yeah. to still make an income and that's why to me it's so very important that we do what we need to do uh for people to get back to work and um or even just stay safe within their family right, right. let's go on to the next thing you know what i was thinking about you had mentioned cooler weather Yes. You know, and it's like, oh, come on. We can't be thinking of fall yet. It's just early August. What in the world? And so what I went to was school. I was thinking, oh, I remember the days, you know, going shopping for backpacks, new clothes, you know, school for the kids. Supplies. Yeah, school supplies and all that. Life turned upside down and backwards for families. <laughs> I cannot imagine what families are going through because we're through with our kids. They've all grown yeah. up and 
gone away. I mean, how does that work if you're going, if you need to go to work, I guess as an essential worker, then you do have access to daycare and certain. But even then, right? having to put your kids. One, yeah. Yeah, that choice. You know, I, saw, I mean. I saw an interview this morning from a school district where the school nurse said, I'm not going in to work because she was in a higher risk category. And so mm -hmm. without a school nurse there, how how does the school survive? You yeah. know, um, th there are just well, so school, many. School things. district and everything are having a hard time, too, because I can't imagine. And because there were so in so many school classrooms, I don't know how it was when we grew up, but you have 20 to 25 first graders in a classroom. That's a lot of kids to manage, especially during this COVID thing. Yeah. Because you don't know where all the kids are or what their families are doing. And someone could have, maybe a, a kid thankfully doesn't get it, but is able to uh, transmit it to someone else. I. How do you keep them six feet apart? How do Pardon? you keep kids? How do you keep kids, especially younger ones, six feet apart? They, they don't have that brain no. with bandwidth to say, I need to stay six feet apart from you. And then are you teaching them fear? Like, oh, don't yeah. get near me because, yeah, I mean, they don't understand. And how do they wear a mask? I can't imagine a first grader wearing a mask for eight hours. No, it's always down and, yeah. yeah. Adults, so, look at the adults out there. The adults can barely handle it. I know. I, I mean. Know. Well, I've always said, I think this is kind of a, a life reset and maybe we were just going in so many directions for so long that um, we're finally bonding back with our kids and our families and doing things that we wouldn't have had time to do before. And you just make it, it we, we just have to make it through this. We can't be stuck and just say, um, oh, I can't do this. There's no, we're not going back. Life has changed. I, I keep has. telling my 20 year old that life has changed. You know, we do stuff so differently now. And I can't imagine being parents in schools and the teachers. Not only that, guess, look at what the teachers had to do. If they weren't quite as savvy online, they needed to be savvy now. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like Lisa said, I think take this opportunity. Families are getting to know their kids and kids yes. are appreciating maybe what their parents do and the work that's involved. They're having to go to work, you know, be at work at home and, you know, having that respect. And, you know, mm -hmm. kids, it's like putting your thinking cap, your brain and trying to create for yourselves. I feel for the parents who have special needs kids that yes. um, need that support and assistance from like a teacher or something like that to help them uh, with activities and give their kids another outlet, another exposure. Right, right. The stuff. So anyway, I, I feel for you. But as I've moved to a neighborhood now and I kind of sit on my front porch, I mean, at the farmhouse, we had a big, huge front porch, but I'm like, well, unless I see a tractor ride by or cars or my see. kids it's like okay boring yes. um but here being in the neighborhood it's kind of fun because i see uh, parents riding their bikes with their kids or taking walks or the older kids are they're on their phone but at least they're walking the dog <laughs> right right that's kind of nice so that's nice but, to yeah. have a little socialization i i oh. i hope people i don't know this is a tough one but you know what do we say about all this it's 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 hard it's hard but we have to deal with it we can't yeah. not deal with it i i just you know it is what it is i, I mean i think we're still on I, facebook right yes yes okay. yes yes God. all right since you broke the Give conversation me some questions. yes instagram I, where are you guys okay well, we have some questions too that were sent in. Should we start with those? <gasps> women. Gosh, that, oh, women. Here, here it went. Her, someone wrote in on Facebook, her daughter had 27 surgeries. Here it is. My daughter has had 27 surgeries and she has high needs and she has not been out of the home from March. She will not be going back to school this year as many kids won't be. 
she is going crazy. You know, I can't imagine, you know, having a, spe like we talked about, having special needs and uh, unless you have a special needs child or student, you don't know what it means just having for a parent, having those couple of hours of just to breathe and maybe giving some extra time to your other kids because, you know, having, depending on what that special needs is, the amount of time and energy it takes for that. So uh, I'll be thinking of all you parents with all of your kids. Somehow yes. I hope you count it as a blessing during chaos. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. It is chaos for sure. Well, life is. is chaos. Doesn't life give us chaos sometimes? And, you it know, always does. I've seen it on your show many times. Well, that is true. What are you going to do? You just got to go with it. That's true. That's true. Um, how about, I think you might need to turn down your volume on your phone. Do I go yeah. mute? I don't go mute, do I? No, just volume. All it way. is down. It's down all the way. Oh, wow. So, okay. I don't know. Okay, that's better. How about some questions? Yes. Um, how um, are any more Little People Big World episodes in the works? Sharon Kay, how is shooting during COVID? We did talk about that a little bit. Well, I was grateful for Lisa and Deb to come out and film, but we had to get them tested. Thankfully, they tested negative. Uh, we have been tested several times. The crew comes to my house or wherever we may be at the farm or whatever, they wear masks constantly. I mean, the cameraman carrying those big cameras and wearing yeah. a mask. And we've had a heat wave in the last couple of weeks. I mean, it is tough. Right. It's really tough work, but the whole crew wears masks. We wear a mask when they first come here. Then we get our temperature yeah. tested. Yeah. Then we're able to take off the mask and uh, get to filming because you can't film with a mask on. And so, but we're all taking those precautions that are necessary and that have been the guidelines that have been uh, mm -hmm. given to us. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. So, And again, I think you and I, Deb, we don't go anywhere. We stay at no. home. Like you said, once a week, go to the grocery store. That's about it. So, well, there's nothing we're... really open and I have ordered, we have like, Chris and I have definitely gone downtown Hillsboro, which is a it's, downtown Hillsboro is a very Hillsboro is a big city, but downtown, the old downtown is very um, small and yeah. a lot of local people there. And so we've gone to our, one of our favorite restaurants, Pizza Rio. We know some people that have played there, but they play outside. We keep our social distancing. That's you awesome. order ahead of time and you let them know when you're there, they bring their food out. So we're doing all of those things that, you know, people have said that we should do because I still believe even the experts don't know, you know, what's going on yeah. and yeah. data is data and data is important, but who's interpreting and are they interpreting it to what the messaging they want it to be? And that messaging is all over the place. So let's just <laughs> do sure. what we need to do at least to keep ourselves somewhat safe. So filming, that's what we're doing. And I tell you, I am very grateful that we are back to filming because that's my job. That's my work. Yes. I'm very grateful that I have it. And I'm thankful that you guys watch and are looking forward to new episodes. In fact, we're beginning to wrap up five. I don't know when they will air it, but it might be sometime in the fall. And so we're working on a on the next set of episodes that will air sometime next year. So what, what do you mean by five? Five more episodes? Five or? more episodes. Okay. And that's not normal. Well, we don't live in a normal world anymore. All right. All right. I mean, what is normal? So oh. okay, anyway. I just disconnected from you. No, I didn't. What? Okay. I thought I disconnected from you from... Uh, oh, someone said they loved my book. I'm so appreciative of that on Instagram. Thank you for that. Yeah. And someone else said that they love your cooking uh, videos because it's like being in your kitchen. Someone said their aunt is retired from CMU as a professor. So oh. someone what? Loved the cooking? Yes, because they feel like they're in your kitchen. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, guys, I would really love your input because when it 
goes out there on my YouTube channel and Amy's Roloff's Little Kitchen, uh, let me know some ideas or something. I know I've asked this before, and a lot of the things that you ask me to cook, I have to put some thought into it because on a video, you would be watching like an hour and a half video. I mean, let's be realistic. So I, I'm trying to get my head around as to how do I prep the food? What do I videotape? What do I show you? So it's all condensed into like 30 minutes. So it's interesting. It's fun because some of you guys gave me some really great recipes and they were all feel good, comfort food recipes. So awesome. I'll have to pick one of those soon. So would you like another question? Yes. Yes. Give me more. Let's pop okay. them out. Can we pretend we're yeah. like popcorn? <laughs> pop. Next one. Pop. Okay. That was how, kind of silly. How the, <laughs> because we're silly. We like to have fun. What's life if you're not having fun, right? Oh, well, you know what? Even, well, the good Lord did say, you know, life comes with trials and challenges, but that doesn't mean he's gone away. Right. Got to right. make the best of it. Make the best. Or, or the thing is, if you got lemons, what are you going to do? Put make on lemonade. a sour face? Make lemonade with a yep. splash of vodka. <laughs> oh dear okay did you bring your wine you have your wine right? i do i do you know what uh, i like about this i cheers. love kathy lee and hoda cheers. and that's i i love you know their little chit chat in the beginning before they had guests and everything it was just so fun so fun it's, they just talk about their day I now do. my day is boring because we don't go anywhere what do we do we're talking with everybody well, else here. True. So and more questions. Like Let's go. Okay. How's the family? How are the grandkids? Well, you know, I've, I've seen some of them as much as I can. Jackson and Lila and Ember and Bodhi. Oh, <gasps> Each cute. of their own. They are so cute, so adorable. But if you follow Audrey or Tori, you will see what's happening. But um, I get together with them maybe about once a week because you know, they're doing their own thing and everything. And um, so, yeah, I know Zach and Tori go to the farm a lot because the farm is still with us. And so they do that a lot. Uh, but then I've got, you know, stuff to do. I'm either doing cooking videos or I'm working on other projects and stuff or we're filming. So, you know, I see the kids when I can. So, well, that's good. so they're all healthy, happy, growing. Crazy, so like far, crazy. they are healthy. They are happy. In fact, I just made banana bread because Chris and I are going on a motorcycle ride, which oh. talk about, a you know, that's like hiking on wheels, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, with a motor. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going on a motorcycle ride. And I know uh, Jared and Audrey are going on a trip just with their family. And they're just going to go up and see my daughter, Molly, his sister, Molly. And so for the road trip, you'll see this on an Amy Roloff's uh, Little Kitchen video, but I'm just going to tell you guys ahead of time. I, I came up with my own granola mix. Everyone probably has their own. I'm, I have my own. So I did that. So I did that on a video and I didn't make them into little bars because sometimes I think you have to use too much corn syrup to oh. make it stick and mold together. And... If you use other things like peanut butter or something like that, if it's colder, they'll be okay. But when it gets warmer, then it's too much. gooey. Nice. So anyway, um, so I made granola for them. So I got to nice. take it over to them after this trip or after this live. And so uh, they can have it for the road trip. That's then I sweet. made banana bread. Deb, guess what you're going to get? You, Deb, you're going to get a, a little mini banana, banana bread loaf. You're going to, I don't think you'll get granola. But I had some leftover jambalaya. I did that. Oh, so my version that? of jambalaya, I think I pronounced that right. Jambalaya. Lisa, I think I might have to have an education on um, this Instagram live thing is weird. It's being very distracting. Yeah. Yeah, it's freezing. Your side is freezing right now. Yeah, I don't know why. That's never happened really, has it? Something's going on. But yeah. I did want to say, people that don't know, Deb, our friend Deb, watches yeah. Felix when you go on trips. Oh, so yes. that's why you're going to give her the banana bread that is with true. Felix at the same time, right? Well, a lot of times with Deb, 
I hope I get my dog back because she loves my dog. <laughs> so she's always she threatening me. I better be in your will because if anything happens to you, I get Felix. I get <laughs> and then I'm like, I don't know. Jacob and Izzy said something about that. <laughs> oh, but she does love Felix. She's, mm -hmm. she's awesome. So that's cool. I know. Instagram, I apologize. I have no idea what's going on. I have refreshed you. It's been going on for a while. I I don't know. I, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is so many people are on. I, I don't know, Lisa. That's a tough uh, one. Okay, another okay. question. Okay, another question is, oh, yeah, I think we just connected here. Nope, I'm oh, on. look at okay. this, Rochelle. Thank Rochelle. you for your information on Facebook. Um, Rochelle St. Pierre. Her four-year-old wears a mask all the time. Oh, yeah. Knows how to put it on and take it off. What a learning lesson we are needing to create and do for our kids. Mm -hmm. to, and I think it's really how you approach it with your kids. If they end up being fearful or um, get um, anxious or scared or something like that, I think it's really how you approach it that can help alleviate some of that. That's true. We don't want so them good to for be you. afraid. We don't want them to be afraid and in fear of everything either. So, yeah. Okay. Well, like question. Bertha. Uh, let, let me read this, Bertha. I just okay. wish more people would take this seriously. Wear a mask, stay out of huge crowds. I feel sad and discouraged because I feel like if we did that as a people for about eight weeks, our health would bounce back as would our economy. I lived through the worst part of it in New Jersey, March and April, this disease mm -hmm. kills. And, you know, I, I would, I would agree with her for, you know, the most part, we need to do whatever we need to do because I would rather wear a mask and stuff and still be able to get out there and do something, maybe not like what we used to, but, you know, be able to do something. But, yeah, take this seriously because something is happening. We may not understand it, but something is happening. Let's right. just and wouldn't all agree you rather, to that. Wouldn't you rather err on the side of caution than yeah. err on the side of not having a mask and thinking, I don't know. There's just a lot of, a lot of politics around that, yeah. but we won't go into that. But I think overall from a safety issue, why not just err on the side of caution? I guess that's my. Well, thought. I would rather wear a mask and, you know, just pay attention to my physical distancing, but still be able to go out if that's going right. to happen. And that's your but, choice. But like Bertha said, but why are you going to a crowd of yeah. whatever? Because the yeah. thing, the other thing we have to be careful of too, mask isn't a hundred percent, but it helps. Uh, Right. Yeah. And again, have one versus not. You're yes. still going to come out yeah, better so. ahead. So, okay. Know. How about what can we expect from Amy Roth's little kitchen this fall? Well, what I'm hoping is that I uh, get my audio book done. So when I do get my audio book done, if those that are able to go back to work and you're on the bus and you want a book to read or hear, uh, a little me, my book will be on audio. But when I get it done, obviously, it's going to take time for my team to edit it and stuff. So hopefully, you know, by mid-fall, it'll be ready to go. And mm -hmm. those of you that are overseas, whether it be South America, whether it be Europe, England, um, Chile, Brazil, we have all over. Yeah, that... Um, you know, you guys will be able to get it. I'm sorry I can't send an audio book. Uh, those that are overseas, the the book is available on Amazon as well. It just won't be autographed. Yeah. So, so anyway. That's good. All right. We also have some new fall fudge flavors mm -hmm. coming. Vanilla walnut, pumpkin, and maybe just do a separate order of the uh, classic chocolate. Because a lot mm -hmm. of people said... I want, I love the combo, but I also want classic chocolate. So yeah, just chocolate. Yeah. We've got masks. We have an excellent um, person that has been making masks that are cute. They're going to be holiday uh, or they could be, we, we'll have a combination of different things, but we're really going to look at the holiday uh, masks. Well, we have to start looking at some of the holiday stuff because yeah. 
I may not have a lot of people at my house, but people, I'm still putting up a tree. I'm still decorating my house. I yeah. still, because like even doing something on the outside, because I want people to walk by the neighborhood and just see, you know, we can still do things to have as part of life and doing what we used to do to some degree. Mm -hmm. But I think masks are going to be a part of our world for quite some time. Yeah. And why not have a fun mask? Where's something fun, fun mask. during the holidays? Holiday fun and kids masks too. We'll have kids. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to connect back to Instagram and it's not happening and it's delayed. I don't know. Do you want to just give it up <laughs> for now? So we're not distracting. Well, I wish, um, have you heard from Naveed what's going on? He said he was fine. Oh, there's Felix. Let's see Felix. Where'd he go? I just clued you in, waiting for Lisa. Okay, it's connecting again. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys, on Facebook. I know we've been fiddling around as we're talking. It's oh, look at this here in Quebec. Classes start in September with full classes. Wow. I wonder how it's going to go. Quebec is Canada. Yeah. For those that yeah. may not know. We've been able to keep that the ratio down a lot better than someone asks, is there going to be a pumpkin season on the farm? Yeah. Well, what um, do you say? To probably, that? You know what? If we do have some form of pumpkin season, I will try and be there. Um, I'm not sure what Matt and the team is coming up with that's gonna make sense, you know, for the cost impact that we have to do in order to have people there. But it, it, unfortunately, it will not be like we have always done in the past. This year is going to be completely different. And um, we're going to try and have pumpkins available. We might have little stations. And oh. unfortunately, it might be like a drive through Because, really? um, well, we have to. Because it, it, for our place, unless we had a pathway that everyone walked and they really couldn't stop. Right. And then they would end it, maybe pick up an item or two, check out so that other people could find a parking walk through, or it might be a drive through where all of us would be out there. You could check, you know, a little stand and we'll just have a few items or you could uh, pre-order ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Our, our situation is different than maybe a you pick where like a blueberry patch that I went to. I wore my mask, but I was down the blueberry aisle all by myself. So I didn't have to wear the mask because I'm like, it is hot. And so I picked my blueberries, but OK, you pick your blueberries and you leave where a pumpkin patch or when you're picking out your tree at some places, you're you're creating an experience. You're creating a memory. You're creating an event, and you know they wouldn't be able to do that. You would no. just be coming to our place, getting out of your car, picking a pumpkin, and leaving because we wouldn't have anything set up. We can't. Well, I don't think we can. In perspective, you guys can get between four and five thousand people yeah. a day. Yes. A day. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, about 15 to 20,000. This is no joke. This is no joke. People are coming from all over the world. Yeah. So it's going to be a complete. And we're bummed about that because, oh, yeah. yes, it's a lot of work, but we definitely look forward to pumpkin season and, you know, having it, um, you know, be successful. A lot of time and work and effort has been put into it to create a fun experience for everybody. So, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to figure it out what we can do. So all I can say is just go to the Roloff family farms website and just look for updates. We don't anticipate so many people coming from out of state, out of town. I think we're just going to get a lot of, a lot more locals. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think so too. All right. When here's another question. When is the wedding? You know what? It's so funny. We've been talking about that. In fact, when Lisa and Deb were over, we kind of talked about that. Um, I've got to talk wedding with planner. you. What? Deb and I, wedding planner. Oh, yeah. But I have to talk to you about that because I really want you guys to, you know, enjoy the wedding as well. And so I think we should get a day of wedding person. And then if they fall into any issues, then they go to you. 
Well, it depends on where you have your wedding. Well, I think it'll all be worked out. So we've got a couple of places. We're going to look at one more. We looked at one. Chris and I looked at one yesterday. We have Ooh, another one that? in mind, and we're going to look at another one. I hope the 13th or the 14th of August, because I really want to make a decision by the end of August. As oh, that's date. great. I think that's, so where too. I, that's really what I'm hoping. If not, that week after Labor Day, that week of Labor Day. Well, that's exciting. Because, you know, I've got to fly. Oh, Kathy. Kathy. Hey, girls Kathy, from you. Alabama. <sighs> hi, Kathy. Kathy Lynn Hope. Oh, tell Kelly hi and everyone down in Alabama, Randy Owens, everyone. Yeah. Love you, girls. So Kathy is the cousin of Randy Owen, who's the lead singer from the group Alabama. And Kelly is Randy's wife. And Kelly and Kathy, please. Tell me you know the group of Alabama. I'll yes. be so heartbroken if you don't. Yes, yes. But we love them. They are so kind and uh, so they've wonderful. done a lot with charity and uh, very And awesome. Kathy, uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope Kelly and the whole group is doing well. Because yep. I know Alabama is, I don't know what Alabama is, but hopefully you're all doing well. Yeah, I think they, they were supposed to have their some tour this year we were going to go to one of their concerts I um, they had to well like everything that. else things have i can't get any more um facebook messages can you yeah if you click in the bottom it'll say continue messages click oh. on the right <laughs> oh. okay. okay amy okay okay um oh, wait a minute. let's no, have another like one oh. I did something oh, wrong. Why did you do that? We did that. <laughs> there we, we go. Got Good. Last time that person stayed on the whole conference. Well, now I know what I now now I know what hide means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys, sorry, we're we're 50 something I think we are off beat on that. this one, aren't we? We're we're just off beat. Too much distraction, but we're good. We're good. You know what? That's part of friendship and uh, anything. This is real. This is not, we didn't stage this or plan this. It's like things come up and we have to deal with it right now. So. Well, you know what? Like as we talk about wearing masks, here's a message on, you know, the Facebook here. This person can't wear a mask because it's difficult for her to breathe. And, mm -hmm. you know, she gets nosebleeds because that's one thing I have noticed wearing a mask my throat gets dry. I'm like, and then, and then I have a tickle in my throat. You know, as a kid, you get that tickle in your throat. And you're afraid to cough because people yes. think COVID. It's like COVID. And it, and it reminds me being in the classroom and you're taking the test and that's when you've got to cough all the time. And <laughs> so I, I can feel for her because there's some people that wearing a mask is difficult. And that's what I mean. It's like try and assess the situation first before we jump all, all all over people, try and yeah. understand. And when you see people that aren't wearing a mask that probably should be wearing a mask, encourage them to wear a mask. Because the minute sport. you pounce on someone, guess what happens? Right. The wall goes up, you're on the defense, and what have you really done? You don't know their story. People yeah. are usually doing things intentionally. You have to think about what's going on and you're right don't pounce don't yeah pounce. it's oh jeepers okay let's have another another question okay yeah you're gonna have to do it because i don't know what's going on with this thing it I get new comments okay yeah. um will you be reading your book for audio yes you will yes um i will be reading my book for audio and um i Thank hope you, um I hope it does okay. I hope it sounds okay. I have um, I have received a lot of comments that I have a good like radio voice. So I'm hoping this comes through well in audio. You have a distinctive so, voice. You do a People distinctive voice, but it's not like that high pitch. It's oh. welcome to kids. I don't know. Kids did it to me. Um, I have a lower voice. And it's just, I don't know, good for radio. So I'm, I'm hoping it's good for audio. 
No, you guys will love it. And she's the hardest person on herself. She's just, yeah, yeah but you'll get it done. Look at Patricia. She said something like we've been saying. When you find yourself in a challenge and a, and 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 dis life has been disrupted, it's like anything else. Allow yourself to like, okay, I can't handle it. Let's just give me a day, give me two days to rethink and how I can shift life. Patricia, keeping a schedule helps because if we're working at home and we don't have our um, boss overlooking us or having other co-workers make us accountable. Keep a schedule so you're trying to do your best to make yourself accountable and stay connected, even if it's just through a phone call or text message. I mean, what else are you doing with your time except watching my show and maybe a few others? Just live chats. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we can't put on the brakes of life. We still got to go on living. We just got to find different ways on how to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I what think other question? Uh, I think traveling is probably one of the biggest things right now. People aren't able to travel like we used to. I mean, summer, we're going here, we're going there. It's vacation and everybody's staying home. Or maybe they're purchasing a boat or a motor home because you can't really fly anywhere. I mean, you can, but. Well, you can still take road trips. Better. But you have to yeah. do pre reservations. And what I've heard from some campgrounds, you know how some campground spaces can be, you know, right next to each other? Yes. They're doing like every other one, or they're making more on reservation instead of just show up that day. Like Jeremy and Audrey um, were renting, we're going to try and rent an RV to do this trip because a road trip is much more efficient, much better. You're not around everybody, depending on where you're staying. And so, um, oh, they couldn't rent one. So they're renting a trailer, you know, like oh. a trailer. Like a, a Lucy trailer. Yeah, like a trailer. And um, so they're going to be staying in that. But, wow. I mean, it's great that people are getting out more. But it's, it's one of those things. Our options aren't there. So everyone is doing the same thing. And now mm -hmm. everyone can't do that thing because no place was equipped that everyone was going to do it. Like the grocery store. You know what I heard on the news? Lysol Clorox. You know, they're running out of, you know, the Clorox wipes or the Lysol wipes. Oh, yeah, the wipes. For yeah, sure. they're, like, I have yeah. not been able to find them in the store since March. Because when they were on the shelves, man, they're gone in like... People Two are minutes. Bored. Yeah. And yeah. so um, I just heard on the news that most likely they may not, for the consumer, be back until 2021. Because, yeah. you, know who, because you know who they're giving it to, which makes sense. Hospital. Hospital, essential workers, uh, people, okay. you know, that may work or maybe the schools or, um, you know, things like that. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, so you know what I do now, which I am so glad that stores have started doing. One person has no right to buy 10 rolls, mm -hmm. 10 right. packages of toilet paper. Right. I'm sorry, but you just don't. Yep. And so because that way the supply can be available for everyone in a more consistent manner. So every time I go to the grocery store, though, I will pick up a roll of toilet, uh, package of toilet paper. I do too. Because I have I found that I go through toilet paper a lot. You know, women, ugh. Just, Just because. Yeah. Hey, I had a fun question. Julie Malachi said, I am from Westland. What high school did you go to? Okay, Westland. Woohoo. Um, I went to Franklin High School in Livonia. Oh. I lived um, between, I think, Joy Road, Ann Arbor Trail, Middle Belt, and Merriman. So my elementary school, uh, Monroe Elementary School, is no longer there. And so the high school was very close by. So, yeah, I went to Franklin High School of Livonia. Cool. Hello, Michigan. Oh, you know what? I am coming to see Michigan. But I am not doing what I would normally do when I come to Michigan. Um, yes, I am getting on a plane. But I tell you, I am wearing the mask. I'm going to wear gloves. I have one little bottle, like, of Clorox. Um uh, 
whites or what I may do is like get a little soft package of whites. Oh, yeah. And um, so when I get on the plane, I'm, I'm wiping off this because I could care less what they do. I'm wiping off the handles. I even, not that I'm going to get the service of it because it was only like, you know, a little bit more. I'm flying first class because you know me, Lisa. Yeah, you have to have I, I can't be. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you yeah. know, flying first class, direct flight, because I really want to see my dad. Oh, my I brother can. drove out to see my dad instead of flying because he's got two young girls and his wife. And so anyway, the whole point being is uh, what was the point? Uh, Michigan in this girl. Oh, yeah, Michigan. Really so I still want to come back because it would really break my heart as I hear so many stories about people who weren't able to visit their parents and they died. People who weren't able to, you know, have closure and go to the funeral you know, of a loved one or their parents or whoever it may be. Um, yeah. You know, just some of the nursing homes. I mean, it's, this is a very, very trying time more so than this generation has ever really seen before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've only been in it. What? Six months. Has it been six months? Well, I don't know. March, April, May, June, July. Yeah, August. What? Yeah. That just gave me chills. Six months? I didn't even think of it that way. Yeah, six months. But again, months. kind of rounding back to our whole discussion, it's like this is the new norm. Talking on a... Well, I'd like to think know, that character. it's the new norm for right now. I hope we can get back to some form before. Because the thing that... I worry about, I know we weren't going to get political here is that um, I don't want to see more of what we're able to do eroded away because we're all panicked. We're, we're, we're having knee jerk reactions to all of this. And um, Oh, someone Mount Clemens, Michigan. I know where that is. Um, and so um yeah. But you're right. It's going to be different. We're, we're, we're not going to go back to what we thought, what we had before March or February. It's, it's going to be totally different. But I, I, I hope it's going to be a good different and we don't see more of what we're able to do erode away. Right. Right. Well, I think it's going to take until we get a, a cure or a, I can't even think of the name of it. And what's Vaccine. It Vaccine. Until we get a vaccine, I think we got. But even that's a little scary. Be cautious. To me. But even that's a little scary to me because I'm all for vaccinations. I mean, yes. I remember as a kid, I got the measles, the chicken pox. I mean, these are the diseases that we don't really have anymore, but they could have devastated a lot of us. Yes. But this vaccine to uh, me was like, man, I hope you guys know what you're doing because a lot of us are going to be guinea pigs. And well, um, I know, right? It's how, scary. how does that work? It is very scary. How are, how are you going to sell that to the American people that, okay, we rushed this because we want it to be there, but at the same time. Have you done it, enough on the trials? Have you done enough? And so that's kind of the balance. Do we stay in and lose our flexibility of gathering and being with people to wait until we get the right data or do we hurry up and rush this and hope that it works for some people and hope people don't have a bad reaction. I mean, I'm, I don't it's, know. It's, it's a little scary on this one. It because is like scary. I said, I'm not against vaccinations. I'm, I'm for either. vaccinations when yeah. they make sense, when they, you know, have information that this is very valuable. Right. But, right. um, uh, we're this one will be a scary one. It'll be scary. I, I agree. I don't know. Even with flu shots, I, and again, I, a lot of my friends are medical professionals and they're like, you have to get the flu shot. Mm -hmm. And I've avoided it for a few years just because. I never you know, got the flu. It, I never got the flu and the strains aren't like they try to predict what strain is going to happen for the year, but it really, it could be something different. But then on the other side, you and I have somebody we've known that actually passed away from the flu two years ago. Lisa. Oh, yes, Lisa. yes. 
Yes. And she was our age and uh, she got really sick and she died of the flu. So. Yeah. Well, even with the COVID though thing, it impacts people differently. And mm -hmm. so, and we don't yeah, know how, how, how it's going to impact us, me or anybody else. And that's why, you know, to wrap this around, do what we can mm -hmm. to help not only ourselves, but to help other people not get the COVID, but also to get back. Like that one person said, if we all did certain things, yeah, maybe we wouldn't get rid of COVID right now, but maybe we would bring the numbers down tremendously. Ter tremendously. Because I'm afraid that if we ever had to shut down like we did in March and April, I don't know if, if, if the ramifications of that would be so much greater, unfortunately, than what we're facing right now. And I guess because we aren't medical professionals, we can't really make that judgment. You know. And you know what? Wear a mask for them. Yes. I mean, oh they're my on the gosh. front lines every single day. And it's not like they want to be yeah. you know, facing all of this. Oh, yeah. And we want somebody there. If we get sick, we want somebody there to help us. So oh, that's thank the Lord where, for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Another question. Okay. Well, first, I want to say hi to Amy, Amy Florencia. She said to say hi. Um, hi. Say a prayer. This is Denise Holt Jones for us in Connecticut. Second day, no power. Seven hundred thousand people. Oh, because power. you know what? Hurricane. Heat wave. No, the hurricane saying, came. Oh, and a heat wave starting Sunday. Wow, that we we will. I I didn't even know the, that. The, the whole East Coast, the hurricane impact. I think the Carolinas. The hurricane impacted the 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 East Coast a little bit as a hurricane, but it also, from what I think I saw on the news it also impacted as a tropical rainstorm that was you know like big wow wow see things we don't even know that's crazy uh we have somebody from paraguay guadalupe ruiz wow. from paraguay um nancy conway long says stay well uh argentina Lane lane bailey says safe travel to your dad lysol what yeah Lysol. thank you i'm Believe me, I, this trip was not taken lightly, but it would break my heart. He's 91. He's doing well. But, you know, as some of us know, he could get a bad cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and his body yeah. isn't able to handle it. And I don't know. I just really want to see him again. But we got Corbin, yeah. Kentucky, Rile Riley. That, I didn't Raleigh? do that right. North Carolina. Raleigh. 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 Hola, the say Paraguay. Oh, oh, buenas noches from Argentina. Zuma Fabiana Castro. Argentina. I just love this because it's like we're just inviting people into your kitchen, my bonus room. We're into just my home. Visiting. Yeah, and just visiting. And again, this is probably the best time to have this because people need. Okay, you know the biggest regret that I have? Why did I not invest in Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> what? But do you really know how to work the Zoom? <laughs> well, okay. Okay, you got me there. You got the stream yard down, though. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> okay, let's answer some more questions because yeah. Instagram wasn't on, and I feel so bad for them. Okay. Um, hello from Corbin, Kentucky. Lisa Godsey. Yep. Um, Linda Allen, making that trip, you will never forget. Cherish every moment with your dad. Laura Bradley says 2020 is over. Yeah. Uh, I think we're over it. It may not be over yet, but we're but totally Seriously, over. can we believe that six months have passed? Uh, I mean. I, I, I can't believe you just said that, and it went right in the front of my brain. Well, it's, it's like, been March, May, yeah. June, July, August. Wait. Yeah. March, May, June. No. March, April. Oh my gosh, Amy, please. March, <laughs> April, May, June, July, and we're into August. Wow. Six wow. months already. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that. Uh... Hello from Vermont. Oh, I was in Vermont in February and yeah, it was like were. 30, 
below. I thought my nose was going to fall off. It was so cold and frozen. <laughs> I, I've never felt cold like that ever, ever. Well, you know, one of the things I was thinking about, you know, wedding stuff. Oh, yeah. What's that? You know, like, you know, because Chris and I will you know, be taking a honeymoon. Um, depending on what next year really looks like, tell you the truth, Lisa, I'm almost like, let's just stay in the States. Cause if anything does go crazy, I, I, or whatever it is, I'd rather be in the States yeah. than out of the U S yeah, and, and not only be able to get back in. And yeah. And only certain places are even taking people from out of the United States. Yeah. So that's interesting too. We don't know where this is going to end no. up until again, there's a vaccine or something that changes us back. Yeah. Well, you can always, well, we have two places that we're thinking about. One is in the States and one is out. So depending on what, um, you know, next year brings, it'll be one or the other. And yeah. if we can't do one, then we'll do the other for our 60th. Can you believe we're going to be 60? What? Okay, you would bring that up because Push I'm going to be 60 before you. No, I'm going to be 59 this year, not 60. Don't push that number on me yet. <laughs> Let's just You'll say pish posh on that one. We're pish, one posh. Year. pish posh. Pish so, posh. Yeah. Yep. So I'll be 59. So be we're going to call it the, um, I had three F words for 40s, 40s, fabulous 40s, fun 50s, fantastic 60s. That's it. We're entering the fantastic decade. Okay. I know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll embrace it when it comes. My dad used to always say, just deal with it when it comes. Just deal with it when it comes. <laughs> well, I think it's fine. Okay. Another question. Okay. Linda Morgan, 2020 can go bye bye over it. Lost my job of 17 years lost my grandma in April. We'll, we're sorry for that. We're really yeah. sorry for that. That's, That's what it. I mean. It's like, you know, when you work out of the home and you're used to working on the home and what we do and what you've done, depending on what your news source is, sometimes I just turn on the local news just to remind myself. I oh. mentioned this before, just to remind myself to be thankful, to be humbled, to count my blessings, but also to be in prayer because so many other people are facing huge life challenges right now yeah. that they thought they could count on. And it's just been yeah. taken away. But I, I, I don't know. The only thing I can say is I, I would really love to encourage people to don't lose hope because mm -hmm. the minute you lose hope, it it's, it's, I, I look at it as much worse. Yeah. And there's you, always, you are much stronger than you think you are. That's a good point. And it's, it's tough. I had a client call me yesterday for my insurance business and she lost her 23 year old daughter of ALS. She was diagnosed in January and passed away four weeks ago. She was That's calling hard. like that. And she said, all I can do right now in my life is deal with my family. She has like a four-year-old husband and then her business. She goes, those are the only things I can deal with right now. I can't deal with anything else. Yeah. And, and and it's just, we're so blessed to have what we have, good health and our families. And, um, you know, we just have to pray for those that that are having a hard time, hard time. No, I, I, I agree. And, and it feels harder when it's just, you know, that's life you know, when you're facing those challenges. But when you have a sense of everything else on top of that, that's going on around, you know, the world, you yeah. know, it's, it's tough. Yeah. Okay. I have Darlene things. that is turning 61 in September. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! And I have Joyce Adams Sloan. She said it's her birthday. So happy birthday to oh, Joyce. Happy Adams birthday. Sloan. And we have I TJ. Have Someone that's turning, oh yeah, Sandra's turning, uh, well, she's 59, so oh. you know what? 
You know what would be fun to do? What? We also said we were going to do a Zoom call with teachers. Oh, yes. Yes, mm. we need to do that. That has to be towards the end of October because I'll be gone. October? September. August. Okay. I might have said something else, but I meant August. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll make that happen. No, you know what would be so good? Let's not even mention a cruise because I don't think any, I, I feel sorry for the cruise industry because I'm not going. who wants to be stuck on that? But you know what I would love to do is go to some place and have like a, an event, but it's all the women from 50 to like 65. Let's make our own red hat <laughs> little gathering. Oh, that would be such a hoot. It would be a hoot, Lisa. <laughs> I'm not Look at that. She says she's fun. Come on, I'm people. Not, I'm not ready to accept that age. Accept group. what? <laughs> oh, you're in denial. I'm in denial, and I'm not dissing anything. That's an awesome group, but am I there yet? I'm not there yet. Of I'm course we're there, there but our oh. mindset can be somewhere else. You're, you're oh, Amy, you track. turn 40 tomorrow. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. And Amber is turning 39 on Sunday. Happy, happy Ooh. birthday. Guess what? Enjoy your last year in the 30s because guess what oh. you'll be going into? Fabulous 40s. Yay. Yay. So happy birthday. Happy big for, for happy big 40th birthday, Amy. And Darlene, our niece, will be 61 in September. Oh, because that's September's your birthday. A good month. Month. That's your birthday month. September's a good month. You and I Molly. got engaged that month. My daughter was born that same month. Same day as you. She has the same birthday as you, right, uh, Molly? Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, I love this. Steven. Oh, Steven. We got a guy on here. Woohoo! Where's Steven? Hey. Steven. He's going to be 28 again in February. <laughs> I Let's love call it. it that. Oh, let's call it that. 29 again or whatever. Peggy Ward, she's going to be 60. Awesome. I love it. I think we have a lot of people in our same age group on here. And, and we love everyone from every age group. But I think there are this. a lot of people. Okay, I have to sh give a shout out to Mary Tyson. She is 72, has been married 50 years on June 20th. Mary, big, huge congratulations. Happy, happy um, anniversary to you both. That is wonderful. Amber Lee Hull will be 39 from Texas. Woohoo! Woohoo! Oh, some Norma Jean Hill said sexy 60s. <laughs> oh, okay. I like that. I like that. Thank Even you. Even when things have gone south, my mind is still in the north. <laughs> <laughs> sexy 60s. Sexy 60s. Okay. I can always think of it. Is the body still going north? I don't know. <laughs> Pretend. <laughs> oh, look at this. Fabulous 40. Nifty 50. Oh, yeah. Sexy 60. Sexy. Connie, I love it. I knew I had that wrong. Jennifer, yeah. hi from Minnesota. Minnesota. That's for my mom's family. What is the best line you use in the morning to keep going? Oh, that's a good question. That is a good question. I would have to say what I think about each morning is that help, help you know what? It's going to be a good day because I got up and I'm going to be a part of it. Regardless of whatever happens, I'm going to do my best. It's going to be a good day. That's a nice one. I also heard that if your feet touch the floor in the morning and you stand up, it's going to be a good day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that one too. If I can roll out of bed and not fall down, <laughs> it'd be a good day. Oh, fun! No, fun. I like that one. Well, we're sixteen minutes over our hour. Do we want to continue, maybe for another five minutes or so? Yeah, I think or another what? five minutes. I I have had some things people have said that um, they're worried about you and I. Because Portland has been in the news. Oh, we need another We will just say that. that Portland has been in the news. Yeah. 
We'll do a little something on the side for that. I think we should have a different conversation for that piece. I really do because we. Well, do I here. think we'll we'll be you know. Yeah, we're safe. Everything's yeah. going well. It's in a small part of downtown Portland, um, and don't. Well, it's not like the whole no miles of Portland, but don't I still think where it's do. at has an impacted of how other people feel about Portland, the outlining areas, which where we live in, it's more of the suburbs, I would say, or in different cities, but yeah. But people have the right to protest and- Oh, we don't absolutely. From us. And uh, yeah, uh, and I think we can both agree. I think there's a very positive, productive way to protest and not so much yeah. the other. Yeah, and that we denounce the violence and oh, destruction absolutely. of any kind. I think we can. I just don't understand. You know, protests. It's like we've got three different groups here. We got the protest group. We got those lingering people of the protest group. That, and then we have this other group. That, why do you want to do violence to your own community? And why does anyone want to encourage other people from coming from wherever to do violence here? I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's just, I, I don't understand. I would like to see some self policing of when you see somebody, if you're protesting and you see somebody destroying something, make it a group effort to tell those people that is not what we're here for. This is not why we are protesting and try to do some of that on your own. But let's save that for another day. I think we've got a lot that we could talk about um, with that. No, I, th I think so too. Yeah. No, so it's, it. well, to me, freedom of speech, any of our first amendment rights in the constitution you, you, you have to stand for something and you, and because just like parenting, you can't have your kids go willy nilly. You, right. you, you have to provide some sort of guidelines, some sort of structure. So your kids understand where can they grow? How can they grow? Help encourage them to be the best that they can be. But freedom of speech, huge. Right. right. But I but think like I, to me, there's a good way to protest and not, you know, Right, right. So Sharon Leeds asked if I was married. Yes, I've been married for 20, 29 years this year. I'll be married. Can you believe that? 29? I can't. That's oh, lot. you're going to be 60 and married 30 years in the same year. Oh, what? You're just full of surprises today, aren't you? Well, I better pick a wedding date because you're not celebrating anything. <laughs> and ours is October, October 15th. And 14th, okay. actually. We got married on the 14th, and then the next year we renewed our vows on the 15th. So we kind of have both days. Okay, let, uh, let, let, let's end it with some positive things. Yeah. I turned 73 last March, Diane. I turned 73 last March, grateful for every day. Some days I do feel 73. I think we sometimes feel our age. Oops. And then some days um, she feels like she's in her 50s. I love it. We Alexandra, turning 31 in October. Love it. Love it. Love it. For you to be on this live event and you're 31, I would give you a hug if I we could. Love you. Yes. Because our kids are that age. Our kids, my son. Jennifer, you're 43 in December. Gloria, 50 in September. Norma Mary from British Columbia is going to be 56. Huh? Nick. Happy birthday to you. 32 on Sunday. Oh, awesome. Marilena Noguera, she is saying greetings from Venezuela. She's one of your number one fans. I can Thank read you. A Thank you. Yeah. Very Kimberly cool. turning 61 in July. Leslie Shores Pam. from Central oh. Valley, California. Uh, Pam, she's like 65. What? I'm 68. I don't want to be part of your group. Oh, listen, we're going from all 45 to upward. All of you are part of our group. We love well, yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because you know what? You, you, 
I think a big thing is going on Instagram. In fact, I forgot to post a picture. Um, I think it's a black and white picture of encouraging women to support other women and things like that. Yes. yes. I love it because it reminds me of Titus, the, the, the book in the Bible, Titus, about older women supporting younger women and younger women learning a lot from the older woman, but it goes both ways. Younger women keep the older woman vibrant, important, useful, and, you know, still feeling like they can contribute and give to something. And this mm -hmm. is what I feel like all in here. We got 31, 43, 28, 25, 73, 65. Love it. Love it. One big party. Nadia Damaris Maldonado said, you both bring joy to me. Well, you guys yeah. bring joy to us because we look forward to this. We look forward to seeing you all on here and your comments. And um, that brings joy to us. Don't you think, Amy? Oh, That's absolutely. I, I, yeah, I just so appreciative of everyone on here. Oh, I do too. I mean, literally people, we look forward to doing this. Yeah, it's, do. um, I know there's a lot of broadcast, uh, no, not broadcast. There's a lot of podcasts out there and I don't know, maybe eventually because I would like to find a way to get um, other individuals that I think just telling about their life story, what have they learned moving into the last third of their life? What message would they give to themselves if they were 22 again? What message would they give themselves when they turn 85? What message would they give to people today? Yeah. And I, I just think because we have come through growing up and a big chunk of our life where it's involving our career, raising a family or whatever we're doing. And we're on this kind of other side that we're not quite done with all of that, but we're thinking about what does the next third look like? I think it's just such a, a very valuable um, time. And well, any day shouldn't be wasted, but this is especially a time that, you know, we, 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 we still need to continue to live our best and don't give up hope. And there's a lot of life to still live. Yes, a lot, a lot. I love that uh, Tom Brokaw, um, he, he, he did a really great thing on a project of his about those that, uh, the survivors still from World War II. Oh, the survivors yes. that, we, that are still living and around from World War II. Think about it. We're not going to hear those stories directly from people no. that were a part of that because, yep. you know, they're getting older and we, you know, need to pass on. But I, I but think that's tremendous. To yeah. yeah. To hear those stories because, you know, they were a part of it then because stories change. No, stories, stories change, but the core of the story doesn't change. Because when we hear it from someone else who heard it from them, from them, that the core of the story is about World War II and some of the things that have happened. But, mm -hmm. you know, hearing the stories, you know. But anyway, yeah. I don't I mean, know. I went on a tangent. No, that's good. This one woman, Barbara Hout, my morning moment. When in doubt, close your eyes, open them again, and look to the sky. I love, I love that. it. Thanks, Barbara. I love it. Wow. I love it. I think one of the other things is too is to wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm doing my best. I am still good and I'm still worth it. Yeah, you're very inspiring. I love I love what you say too, because so many people you, you just need to hear that. You well, you do, to, and you also I, need to hear hear yourself say that about yourself. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. once you think you are worth it, meaning I am worth the time I put into myself. I am worth, you know, investing in myself. I am worth doing something that I enjoy doing, but in turn can maybe impact someone else. You know, it's because once yeah. you start thinking, once you start believing, honestly believing that in yourself, it's amazing how 
that inner soul, that inner core in us wants to do something good for somebody else. Yeah, that's right. Someone put hate is lack of love. I That's a good saying too. It's too much focus on what's wrong and what's different and what's not good enough. Yeah. 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 Noble Barlow. Thanks for saying that, Noble. I know. Nancy O'Neill. I know. Lisa has great hair. Look at mine. <laughs> Amy, okay, we go to the same hairstyles. Amy has great hair. I do not I have want to fine hear hair. I have lots of fine hair. You she have good hair. Beautiful, you have beautiful fine hair. You have a great color. You just had a cut. Everybody, anybody that posts anything negative about that, that's going to piss me off. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but no. no I should have combed it. But, well, okay, but the so thing is, though, I rushed over here from filming at the farm from an interview. And you know how we were scrambling that, what is happening? But you know what, Amy, this is what I know of my dear friend, Amy, is when she starts getting relaxed, she starts tossling her bangs, <laughs> put, primping her hair, and then she thinks it's messy, but that's her way of like relaxing. And so when you see her tossle her hair and do that, she's feeling good and it looks cute. Her hair is great and you have a great style. So I love your hair. I love no, your Trent hair. does a good job. He does. He does. Trent Edwards, Lake Oswego. Oregon. We like him. He, he has great color. Yeah. Hey, he's a know, guys, we've been on this for an hour and a half. <laughs> of course we have. <laughs> Part of it was, we're so sorry for some of the technical difficulties. Facebook, I mean, Instagram, don't give up on me. Yeah. Um, we're going to post this. And so hopefully if uh, those that have missed, missed some of it, or want to watch it again, it'll be on uh, both of the sites, I believe. Mm -hmm. But just really want to thank you for being here, sharing some of your comments, um, just being part of the conversation. Um, yeah. I know it's been a long time, and Lisa and I keep saying this, but you know we're doing our best to stay on top of uh, the technology of this. I wish we could answer so many of your questions. Yeah. Um, I mean, look at this, encourage someone married 42 years and county and, you know, they're 63 years old. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. great stuff. It's that to me are more stories that we need to hear along with the challenges that so many of us are facing, because mm -hmm. to me, stories like that is what gives us hope. Yeah. It, what gives us, it's like, you know what, if we, if we can just find ways to do what we need to do for ourselves and for other people, we'll reach 43 years of marriage or we'll do no. some of this. Just or, um, you know, just stay in prayer about the things you have lost and the people that have uh, passed on. And because life, unfortunately, does happen, but it doesn't but mean we have, we have to, to give up or lose hope. Right. We have to we have to move forward. We have to keep going. That's mm -hmm. what we're. You have to keep going and look for the good in everything. Because there is good in everything. There is. Every single time. You know, I was walking around the farm and I was taking some pictures. And when you think about it, I saw this. It looked like a weed. But I thought, isn't that like life? The bad can look good. And you have to have a discerning heart and mind to determine is this someone in, yeah. you know, alluding something that's bad that is good? Or can it be in the midst of challenges and chaos and something that's not so good? You still have the ability to have the light that shines, not only for yourself, but for someone else. So it's I like you, the, the, there's two ways to look at something and you have a choice. Which way are you going to look at it? That's so funny. I saw this weed in the months of, dirt and dryness and everything. And I can think of a weed, but it has a flower to it. But a Aww. weed is not a good thing. Weeds aren't good for a lot of stuff. But yet there's the daisy. And it just reminded me of just having a discerning heart and mind to really know what is good because there's always good in something. That's right. You, you always. Pick the even in out. the weed, there is something good. good. And well, I'm not talking about that kind of weed. I'm talking about the weeds, weeds. 
The weeds that you want to pull out and pluck out of your garden. We are in Oregon. So yeah, anyway. Okay. Oh, you know what is so, so out there is Queen Anne's Lace. Can you imagine naming a weed, a wildflower? Well, really a weed, I think, because it can flower. grow anywhere. Queen Anne's Lace. I think someone maybe, no, don't get after me, people. Don't maybe someone it. from Britain named it Queen Anne's Lace. Because when you look at that flower, it does look like lace and it smells nice, but it's a weed. Well, that's okay. There yeah. are weeds everywhere and you just like pick the best part out of it, right? Well, there's, a, there's always the best in someone. That's what yes. we're really trying to say. Yes. There's good in everyone. We just, have, we just sometimes have to help the good come out in people. That's right. So All why right. not start with you? All right. I think on that note, it's been uh, hour 32 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Thank everyone, you. for being Thanks a part of watching. Lisa and I, Amy Roloff's Facebook Live. Yes. It's really like a little big talk. We talk about a lot of little stuff, but occasionally some big stuff. Um, but we love doing this, questions. and we love you being a part of the conversation. Yes, and tune in. We'll be back maybe, oh, a few weeks, maybe in between. You, you know what? Well, we'll probably be back. I don't know. If, let's try the end of August before Labor Day. Okay. Because okay. if not, it'll have to be that week after Labor Day. All right. That won't be far. Okay. But right. again, uh, Instagram, if Thank you happen you. to come on Facebook, so sorry. It did not work out. I have no idea why. We're going to try and figure it out. We'll figure Everyone, it out. Everyone, stay safe. Stay, stay healthy. Safe. Do what you need to do. Wear the mask. Wash your hands. Keep your physical distancing but stay connected. Yes. All right. Until Love you, friend. Time. Love you. Bye. Bye.